glad to be with all of you on this beautiful day. There she is, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in her first appearance in Iowa since losing the caucuses there in 2008. She came in third behind John Edwards uh, back in 2008 and first place, of course, of uh, President Obama. Her attendance at the fundraising event added fuel to the speculation that she plans to run for president in 2016. It certainly looks like it. From all of this, joining me now, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who has also been uh, expected as uh, being in that group potentially to make a run himself in 2016. Senator, good morning. Good to have you here today. Good morning. Glad to be with you. So what would you make of Hillary's appearance over the weekend? <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to see her back in Washington testifying about uh, her role in the Benghazi tragedy. There's still a lot of questions. I asked her point blank when she came the last time, what were they doing in the CIA annex and did that have anything to do with the attacks? And she acted as if she knew nothing about it. But it's funny, now reports have been coming out for about a year saying that she was the biggest and most eager to get arms out of Libya to send them into Syria. So there's still a lot of questions we've got for her if she decides to come back here. Indeed there are. Uh, and more revelations about Benghazi this morning that we're going to get to a little bit later uh, in the program that we need to talk about as well. Uh, let's take a listen to one more uh, bit of sound from Hillary and then, and then I want to get your thoughts on that. It is true, I am thinking about it. But, but for today, that is not why I'm here. No, she was there to eat steak. Uh, it was a big steak fry in Iowa. But, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people are just kind of over this, this whole dance. You know, why do we all do the dance? Why not just declare? Why not just say that you're running? And some might ask you the same question, sir. <laughs> Uh, that's a fair question. And I think for me, there are still some considerations. There are family considerations. But also, uh, I think you don't know where things will be in six months. Will the public be uh, open to your message? Will your message have a chance of resonating? And uh, this, nobody wants to undertake this ordeal unless they think they can win. And frankly, I think I'll know a little bit more in about six months kind of where the public is and what they're thinking of my message before we make a final decision. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, and and understandable. Uh, there, there's a story this morning in the Washington Post that questions whether or not you've been moderating some of your stances uh, in order to potentially prepare yourself uh, for a broad audience if you do decide to, to head in there in 2016. And one of the things that it talks about is your stance on ISIS, that a few months back you said that you didn't really see the American interests that were at stake um, and that now you've been supporting the idea of airstrikes. Uh, where do you stand this morning, given, given this more horrific news that we got over the weekend? Well, I've consistently said ever since I got in public life that when we do decide to go to war, there should be a vote in Congress. And so I'm still exactly where I've always been on that. When you get to Congress, then there's a debate. Is it in America's interest? And that does change depending on the facts. And so five years ago, I didn't think ISIS was a real threat to us, but I didn't want to arm them. That's where I disagree with some Republicans, also Hillary Clinton and also President Obama, is we never should have sent arms into Syria because that allowed ISIS to grow stronger. But now I think, I'm like many Americans, I am very uh, affected and somewhat emotional about the fact that they're killing our journalists. And I think it's going to backfire on them because I think you're now going to see the, the civilized world come in a united fashion after them. And I think they'll have no place to hide. We heard uh, from General Hayden over the weekend and your colleague Lindsey Graham both saying that there is no way that this can be done without a larger presence of at least special forces on the ground to back up whoever might end up coming in to help us. And there's a lot of questions about that as well. What's your take I on that? You know, I, I, dis I tend to disagree. I think the first 10,000 soldiers marching into battle need to be from Iraq, live in Iraq, and they need to be fighting for their homeland. The second 10,000 need to be from Saudi Arabia, because frankly, Saudi Arabia has been aiding and abetting this by really for decades funding radical Islam. And many say that many of the arms that Saudi Arabia has been funneling into Syria have gone into supporting ISIS. So Saudi Arabia needs to step up. Iraq needs to step up. Turkey needs to step up. There's nobody in the surrounding region that says they're in favor of ISIS now. They need to step up and put their soldiers and their money where their, where their mouth is. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, would agree with that. We just spoke to KT McFarland, who certainly agrees with that. If a vote were to come to Congress to, to ask you to go to war against ISIS and to call it that, would you, would you vote yes? Yes, but I would try to uh, sunset the provision. I've been upset that 
we voted 15 years ago and people are still using a vote from 15 years ago. So I think really if we authorize force or declare war, it should sunset at the end of the year and we should debate again because I don't like the idea that one generation can vote to bind another generation to war forever. I do favor doing something about ISIS. I would vote yes, but I would vote to limit the declaration or limit the authorization to a time period. Understood. And when do you expect that you will announce whether or not you will run? Yeah. We're looking towards the spring at making a final decision. All right. We'll look forward to that. Senator, thank you very much. Good to see you as thank always. You.